some of these pieces in here. This was my, yeah, this was one of my mugs that I did that. This is oh, it, guys. This so is why good. we do it. So all this carbon trapping around the edge. What's up, guys? Welcome to the studio. I'm John the Potter. So this is part two. If you wanna go check out part one, that was the last video we posted about building the kiln. Today is gonna to be all about glazing, loading, and firing the kiln. And I'm gonna do a voiceover over the video so that you guys can, I can tell you what's happening. But we have fired it a couple times since this video already, and so we are getting some really, really cool results. So uh, check out anything on the Etsy shop. We're gonna keep stuff going on there. Uh, so if you wanna find some of the soda fired pots there, check out the Etsy shop. Thank you guys so much. Let's jump into the video. Yes, this is where the soda vapor hit the yellow flashing slip. So it's the interaction of the soda vapor on the flashing slip. So this has a liner glaze, which is uh, the liner glaze here. It's a transparent glaze. So if you're like, oh, I really want transparent. So maybe you put that on the, these are the ones that look the best. Floating blue, matte green, rutile white. And then I started learning about galactic indifference, um, the Panama red. So I recommend you using uh, the flashing slip and then some glazes. And then you can always just make put your pieces in raw. After spraying the yellow flashing slip and then wadding all the pieces, so every piece that goes in the soda kiln has to get put up on wads. Now we did use advancer kiln shelves in this kiln load, which I think is a game changer for soda building because now the pieces will not stick to the shelves. And one of the biggest things about atmospheric firing is that there's glaze basically vaporized all throughout the kiln. And so glaze is adhering to all the pieces and all the kiln shelves and everything. And so the advancer shelves, which is so nice about them, is they don't, uh, glaze won't stick to them. It comes right off. All right, it's exciting stuff. We fired overnight. Now we're at like 2,100 degrees. We're gonna start loading the soda in. It's very exciting. The kiln worked amazingly. Last night I decided to fire it overnight so that we could just start loading soda in this morning. So, all right, let's do it. Gorgeous day today. Yeah, John stayed up all night and fired the kiln for us. <laughs> I did 40 on the bottom, but we're at like 21. Let's just throw the soda in there. Okay. Because once we throw the soda in there, it creates a reduction out. Anyway, right. Yeah, let's just do it. And then in the morning by like nine or 10, we were at cone five, which is when we can start to load the soda in. So we made the soda mixture, which is a mixture of baking soda and a couple other chemicals that I can't remember off the top of my head and sawdust and water. And that's what we put on an angle grinder and then we load into the kiln. So here Kevin is loading the first batch of soda in the kiln. So we made a 6,000 gram batch and then three different sessions. So we put the soda in and then the soda automatically creates a reduction atmosphere, brings the temperature down. And then we wait about 45 minutes to an hour and then the temperature will start to come back up. So what's happening is we're waiting for all that soda to vaporize and then get through the kiln, get, adhere to all the pots. Here we're taking out draw rings. So there's actually just little rings made of clay in the kiln that we can pull out and then look at it to see what the soda uh, is doing in the kiln and what's it doing to the clay. So like I said, we load one batch in and then we wait 45 minutes then we load more soda in, wait another 45 minutes. So it's kind of like this cycle of the temperature going down. Then we wait for the temperature to come back up. We take the draw rings out to look and see what the soda looks like. It's a really, really cool process. And so that is like where the magic is happening of soda firing is in between those we load it in and then the burner is just burning it. And then the soda, when the soda's in there, it creates a reduction atmosphere. And so that's what that flame coming out is in a reduction atmosphere. All right, and now the next day we came back, Kevin and I opened it a little early before people got there. Uh, it was pretty amazing at the results. Right oh yeah. Oh my gosh. It's, it's actually flexed in. Gorgeous black carbon trap. That is. I love. I oh oh, <laughs> so good. Oh nice. There's... I just want to show them just a little sneak peek of oh, what, yeah. just like some of these pieces in here. This was my yeah. This was one of my mugs that I did. That this is oh, it, guys. This so is why good. we do it. So all this carbon trapping around the edge. It's gorgeous. Let me get the, the Look at light. Like, that color right there. Like that purple. Like I should yeah. I should pull out what exactly that was. Yeah, it's okay. Cause it's it's all gonna be you're gonna be trying so many combinations. But 
just getting this carbon trapping around here with the extra soda vapor. So this is a very juicy surface. And uh, I mean, that's so unique and so special that uh, you got to charge over a thousand dollars for that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's for auction right now. Yes, okay. yes. Has definitely not seen anything in here. No, not at all. Oh. Oh. Super cool. And the flashing, right? The flashing slip on the bottom. Oh, yeah, that one so is that flashing slip? Yeah. Uh, and then bl oh, floating blue. Yeah, that is very really cool. interesting. But I like where the bird is. What? Yes. That's that. yes. Yes. What's? Could you remember what was on there? I got notes on the. I just pulled up. I got notes. Okay. Look how Whoa. great that is. Look at that. Yeah. I can probably guess, but yeah, there's some green. Uh, galactic difference oh, under. Cool. A couple spots on one, uh -huh. one on each side, and then on, then on the handle. Yeah, on a bunch of those. So this is just, oh, so nice. Love this handle drift. That's mine. Oh, you want to investigate mine. it? Look at that. Mm. Very nice. Like that does eyes. looks like starry night. Nice. Oh. Oh. Wow, nice. Very cool. So that's just yellow flashing. Yeah. Thank you. That carbon Careful of that box. This oh, look at this handle. I love how this yeah. handle on the inside works. Nice, this got is a good B soda. Mix, I'm sure. Yes. Right? Oh. I love when the carbon trapping goes like a leopard spot. Oh, yeah. Cool. And then it captures on the edges. So this is just B mix, right? With no nothing on it. I have. This must be a speckled clay. Wow, wow. That's one of my favorite combos right in there. Oh, there's the egg. The egg. Nice, that's gorgeous on the inside. So amazing. That's perfect, right? Yeah. Let me see the thing that's being mixed again here. Just that carbon trapping is really nice. It was, yeah, matching. They were matching when they started. Oh, wow, really? Matching glazes? No. No, 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 no. matching. Pig skin or elephant skin on that, so that might need to get either ground down and dry side or the flashing side. So that's galactic indifference, I'm sure. And green mat. With green mat and then flip around. And then Boom. it's, wow, Whoa, it's that's so very that's dark. Yeah, that's a dark clay. Slip on the outside. That's how you get like that harsh. Yeah, so the front picture is mostly died away completely, but the back one showed up because of these little pieces of jewelry. Good choices and glaze combinations. Alright, good work. Yay. Nice job, everybody. Alright, John is going to set up this little uh, sanding area here. Oh, but first, we're going to put the pads from Diamond Core on the top of the sanding area. Because I had to build my own kiln. Because you can't just do this and then just put your own sanding on top. Yeah, yeah. 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 I kind of took the lead of uh, Steve Davis over at Aardvark Clay. All right, guys, so that is about it for this video. All right, come back next week for uh, when I sit down with Kevin. I'll interview him, talk about this kiln a little more in depth, talk about his pottery and his future with these kiln building workshops. Uh, and we will be doing some kiln building workshops too. So reach out to me uh, by email if you're interested in coming for a three-day kiln uh, not building workshop, but a kiln firing. So you get to come, bring some pieces, have some uh, firings. We're, all, we're dipping our toe into classes and workshops. Me and Kai have some big ideas coming for the future of uh, what we're going to be doing here. And it involves uh, classes, workshops, uh, bringing people in, doing advanced, you know, building more kilns, doing more workshops. We just had such a great time with Kevin. Uh, we And it went really well, and people were really super into it. So uh, if you're interested, get on our email list on our website. Um, we're going to be doing lots more things. But in the meantime, all your pottery purchases help so much. So I can't say thanks enough for all your support. I appreciate you guys so much. If you go over to the Etsy shop and buy pots, all of that goes into, you know, I have a full-time employee in here. Uh, we're making pots to sell every day, but we're also thinking about what comes next. How can we like impact the pottery community uh, the best? 
And I think we have some really cool ways that we're going to be doing that in the future. So thank you guys all so much. Uh, it really starts with everybody that watches, everybody that purchases uh, and supports the channel. So thank you guys so much. We'll see you guys in the next video.